trying to get you guys on the radio from George's office. I guess I was being a little optimistic. You were. Anything important? Yes, Sergeant Scott's going up country. I conned him into giving us a ride as far as the trading post. We have about an hour there, and then he picks us up on his way back. Want to come? I do, anyhow. Haven't seen Denise in months. Mike? Sure. When do we leave? Right now. OK, I guess we can fix this when we get back. Where's the sergeant going? Well, I said something about going someplace called Esme. Isn't that where the gold mine is? Yeah, that's right. Well, come on. I don't think we're going to make it. There's a trading post about a mile down the road we can call from there, get someone to pull us out. We can't just leave this with a quarter of a million bucks in the trunk. We can lock it. I don't like it. Neither do I, but when obliged to bow to the inevitable, one should at least bow gracefully. Coffee, Grandpa. Thanks, honey. That looks like Doc Huntley. And he's walking. If he walked all the way from Esme, he'd be pretty tired. He couldn't. It's 20 miles. Must have uh, had some trouble with his car. He's got someone with him. Hmm. Even one of the miners will ride into the city, I guess. Hi, Doc. Hi there, darling. Prettier than ever. Hi, Charlie. I can't say the same thing for you, my lad. I got a kind of hunch you're in trouble. Ditched. Well and truly ditched. This poor fellow asked me for a ride and found himself clinging to a broken reed. I'll call up Joe Timberlake at the garage and get him to pull you out. Rustle up some more coffee, honey. Sure. Hi, ma'am. Put me through to Joe Timberlake. Sit down, make yourselves at home. Sit down, my boy. Liberty Hall. Joe there? Oh. 
Tell him to come up to the trading post with his truck. Doc Huntley has got himself ditched. Uh -huh. We're on half an hour. Thank you, darling. It smells delicious. It's hot. Now oh, watch it. We interrupt this program to give you a special news flash. Gold bullion worth a quarter of a million dollars was stolen from the Esme Gold Mining Corporation today. No details are yet known, but a security guard was beaten up by one of the thieves and seriously injured. There sure is a lot of wickedness in this world. Police have issued oh, the following description of the assailant. Age 32, height 5 feet 10 and a half inches, weight 165 pounds. Medium build, dark brown hair, dark brown eyes, no visible marks or scars. Last seen wearing black woolen cap, red and blue checked bush jacket, dark gray trousers, and heavy boots. That ends the news flash. We'll bring you more as soon as details come in. Well, what do you think of that? You must have been... Grandpa. At least it doesn't look like anybody was hurt. Couldn't have happened that long ago. The tracks are still fresh. You worked pretty hard trying to get it clear. I guess they tried to get to the trading post, eh, to get help? Probably. Well, if he's there, we'll see how he's fixed. Come on. Your granddad around? I want to talk to him. He went out. When you expect him back? Well... He didn't say. The call was somewhat sudden and rather pressing. Okay, it can't wait. You put these in my little book, huh? Frenchie? Nothing. There's a good girl. Whatever made you do this? Very early on in my career, I discovered the dentistry was not my vocation. One mouth seemed to me to be singularly like the next. Why didn't you quit? Too late. I was committed. I had no other skills. So I practiced dentistry for 25 years in the vain attempt to escape from it. That's no excuse for pinching all that gold. I know that, but I was tempted. As dentist to the mining corporation, I knew their schedules. So that poor man got beaten up. Yes, well, I entirely disapprove of that. But my friend Benton is a stupid fellow. Unfortunately, I had to use him. I still don't understand why you did it. <laughs> I found that my declining years were declining rather too rapidly. You'll find the same yourself, my dear, when the time comes. Well, the gold's not going to help that. <laughs> It'll take the sting out of it. I cherish the idea of ending my days in comfortable idleness in a warm climate. Somewhere near the Mediterranean. I recall a little beach below Taormina in Sicily. Faces east, of course. On the whole, there is a lot to be said for Positano, or the fishing boats at Nazar, or even possibly the Adriatic, Dubrovnik. Charming, if one can put up with their hilariously impossible language. Is that a car? Yes. Do be careful. I'm only thinking of your grandfather. You're a beast. <laughs> Not really. Merely a human being and honest enough to admit it. Okay, maybe you're just crazy. <laughs> Quite right, my darling. Out of the mouths of babes and suckling. Hi, hi Denise. Hi. Hi, Denise. Sergeant Scott was coming up this way, so he scrounged a ride from him. That's great. You gonna be here long? Well, I've got some business a few miles up the road. I'll pick them up on my way back in about 45 minutes. Well, fine. You don't sound too pleased. Something wrong? No, everything's okay. It's, it's just I didn't expect you. I guess you know Doc Huntley. Hi, Doc. 
You practice at Esme, don't you? Two days a week. I was just on my way back to the city. Or should be, except for a slight error in judgment. You went into the ditch. Precisely. You need any help? Charlie Lagarde was kind enough to arrange that with the local garage before he went out. Well, that's good. You locked your car up pretty carefully. Why not? It was full of gold. Gold? Well, not exactly full. Curious thing about my patients at Esme. They spend their lives mining the darn stuff, and then they insist upon having their teeth filled with it. Well, maybe it's just sentiment. When did you leave Esme? It would be about the same time as the robbery, but the news hadn't gotten out yet. Well, how'd you hear of it? On the radio, just after we got here. Shocking business, isn't it? Are you involved at all, Sergeant? No, not directly. As yet. It's not my territory. Well, I guess I better be moving. Pick you kids up in three quarters of an hour, okay? Okay, Sergeant. Your granddad went out? Yes, with some stores. In the truck? Well, uh, maybe I'll see him when I get back. So long for now. I guess you'd like some coffee. Let me get it. No. I know where everything is. You stick around out here, just in case you get any customers. No, I'll get it. Please don't come in, any of you, please. Well, for goodness sake. Boy, there's something screwy somewhere. Boy, she's scared stiff. Do you know what's going on? As a matter of fact, I do. You're right, she is scared. Not stiff, perhaps. That might be an overstatement, but scared. Well, about what? In case you find out her little secret. What secret? Christmas decorations. In there? Why not? They always decorate out here. This is where they have their party, not in there. Well, this time it's going to be different. It was supposed to be a surprise for you. I'm sorry you forced me to tell you. Well, I'd like to see inside all the same. Wait. Now think about that child. You don't want to spoil everything for her. You were a child once yourself, not so very long ago. Do you remember? Well, sure, I remember. Well, then, you do understand, don't you? Okay. I guess if that's the way she wants it. Okay, come and get it. Hey, thanks. Hey, where's Topper? Hey, Topper! Topper, where are you? Sorry. I guess he didn't get the message. I guess not. Okay, you can stop praying. Where do you think this is going to get you? Me? Florida. We got it all figured. You really think you can get away with it? Sure. Suppose Joe Timberlake comes here. What happens? Doc will tell him what to do. Get the car out and bring it here and park it in the back. And then Doc will bring the kid in here, you go out there and do what she's doing right now. Keeping her trap shut. In case of accidents. While you two just drive off in the car. With the kid. Oh, don't worry about her. She'll be all right. She won't get hurt. I like the kid. And Doc's pretty fond of her, too. He's telling me all about her while we were walking down here from the car. She's sweet. She's a doll. Should be a dead doll if you squeal. When do you expect 
to Uncle Charles to get back? I don't know. Well, didn't he say before he went out? No, I guess he didn't mean to be long. How long has he been away? Well... Just after I descended upon you. About a half an hour. Joe Timberlake should be with us quite soon. To uh, pull you out of the ditch? Yes. How'd you get into it? The roads aren't that bad. I'm a nervous driver at the best of times. Today, for some reason, uh... Bring it here, my darling. Bring it here. I never had any artistic talent. I've often regretted it. But oddly enough, since my earliest childhood, I've been able to draw a little man in a derby hat with a rather amusing expression. Let me show you. I'm surprised at you. Now then, I always start with the derby. I don't know why, except it never turns out if I don't. I'll get it. Yeah? Who? Oh, Mr. Timberlake. Yeah, we were kind of expecting you. Oh, gee, that's too bad. Sure, sure, I'll give him the message. You're welcome. That was Mr. Timberlake. He's got a broken half shaft. He's trying to fix it, but... Translate, my boy. I'm a child in these matters. Well, I guess it means he won't be able to do anything for him until tomorrow morning. Pity. It is funny. Look. Now, my darling, take this to Mr. Benton with my compliments. Run along, my darling. What gives, honey? Um, I was just wondering... What about? If you'd like some coffee or uh, something. Don't worry about us, kid. Just stay out there and keep an eye on things, okay? Okay. What do I owe you? Oh, $850? That's okay. We got a quarter of a million. You grand that back yet? Oh, well, tomorrow, I guess. Tell him I was looking for him, huh? Didn't I see you before? 35 minutes ago. Oh, sure, but before that. Possibly, if you happen to work at the Esme mine. Sure, now I remember. You're the dentist, huh? Yes. Well, what do you know? I got a toothache and I find a dentist. Look, that's the big one. Right here at the back. I gosh, huh? Uh, some other time. No, no, it won't take a minute. I show you. Voila. Huh. Shocking. You see him? I think so. Uh -huh. Open wide. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You have an alveolar abscess. Are you kidding? I leave it to you to form an opinion. See me next week at the clinic. Okay, next week at the clinic, huh? That will be delightful. I should be looking forward to it. Goodbye. Merci beaucoup. Et au revoir. Well, what do you know? A consultation for free, huh? Au revoir, tout le monde. Now then, where were we? Hi, kids. Got back sooner than I thought. You ready? Well, I think we'll stick around here for a bit. But Pete! Well, Denise is still alone, and... Might as well stay and help her out. All right, I guess Charlie can bring you back in the morning. Okay with you two? Sure. Well, what about you, sir? Are you fixed, or can I give you a lift to Indian River? You can hire a car from there. A rather a good idea. Could we uh, pick up some stuff from my own car, my equipment? Oh, sure, yeah. Good. Been nice knowing you all. We shall meet again, perhaps. Goodbye, my darling. Goodbye, Doc.
I wish I were a little younger. Some 50 years, eh? But I'm not, so let's go. What's the big idea, Pete? We weren't going to stay here. The doc gave this to Denise to give it to somebody in the room. Car ditched until tomorrow, get ready to make a break. I don't know what this means, do you, Denise? Doc and another man stole that gold. And the other man in there with a gun and Grandpa. So we can't do anything, because if we do... Well, you've given the note. Tell him the doc's gonna offer the RCMP. That'll make him think. I don't think he can, but it's worth trying. That gold? For filling tea. Well, you don't need a quarter of a million bucks for that. Are you suggesting? Yeah. I see. But why? Well, I talked to Esme on the phone. I asked a few questions and figured a few things out. Put two and two together. And got four. That's right. What precisely put you onto it? Something you said. Just after we got here, I got a little curious about the other guy, and I didn't see him around. He had to be somewhere. Unfortunately. Well, let's go. I want to get him before he does any harm. It's all yours, my boy. <laughs> No, 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 no. Not that one. Think, my darling. Think. That's better. Uncle Charles and Sergeant Scott are taking a long time. Well, sure. Why not? Last time we saw that guy, was heading for the North Pole. And he looked as if he meant to get there. Sounds like them now. Well, for gosh sake, well, couldn't you make a break for it? Remember what I told you, my boy. Bow gracefully when bowing to the inevitable. 